I didn't even remember to tell you all to do a silence, but you all remember to do it. Look at look at that. <laughs> we, we we are unseasoned professionals here, okay? I'll let you know. Uh Everyone here is a veteran of the Yorski Wars. <laughs> yeah, we, we've all had it drilled into our heads. Mike Mono, listening volume, all the, all of the stuff. I've committed many war crimes <laughs> in the Yorski Wars. Welcome everyone to some some dice funk that isn't being narrated by Oskin, Austin Yorski. What what's going on here then? This is not the stated order of things. Uh, chaos reigns. I've been given power. <laughs> no one is ready for what I am about to do. There was at least one person who thought it was me who was going to be the DM chair. I'm just sitting here rubbing my hands I'm like, oh, you don't know. Oh, I, you I don't know. I saw a lot of people suspecting you were going to be co-DMing this season. And I mean, that makes a lot of sense. You know a lot of the rules and numbers of T&D uh, easily and without having to do lots and lots of research. I, on the other hand, have stories. Oh, I'm going to take you on some stories. <laughs> That's why you're taking charge. You can use me as a glossary whenever you need it. Um, and I'll make sure to betray the party as necessary when it's uh, plot appropriate. So don't worry. Uh, yeah. We've got our trust in you. <laughs> this is where I should probably explain what's happening, because I don't know whether this has come up on the air during this season of Dice Funk so far. But season 10 of Dice Funk, a little bit different to some of the previous seasons we've done, in that it's essentially a season of two halves. We have... Uh, We've, we've got the home half of the season that you've uh, presumably already been listening to by the time you get here. And I'm going to be DMing the away section, uh, where we, we're going to have a little team of people going off on all sorts of missions, not on one big ship. So uh, we should probably do introductions. I'm Laura. I go by Laura K. Buzz everywhere on the internet. I'm a player over on the other side of this season of the campaign. I'm going to be playing... Everyone in these sessions who isn't the players. Who are you players? One of you introduce yourselves. Get us get us rolling. Alphabetical order dictates that Austin, your ski should step up. <laughs> That's how I was trained. Uh, <laughs> you have to know me from the other side of the campaign. It would be wild to start here. I don't know what kind of mind would uh, decide on such a thing as to start in me. an episode four or five or six, wherever this <laughs> falls. Um, Dan is the sicko, I guess. You're volunteering that. <laughs> Yeah, um, sick. Oh gosh, there's a picture of Dan at the window. Sick I mean, goes like. <laughs> I mean, back, back in season three, I didn't start till episode nine. Like, it's fine. It's doable. <laughs> I technically started episode what, like twenty eight in uh, season nine. <laughs> yeah, but as a listener, it's different for as a player than a listener. Anyway, Austin. Yeah, both. <laughs> Austin Yorski, yes. Anyway, yeah. Austin Yorski, patreon.com slash Austin Yorski is how you keep me alive. For one single measly American dollar, you get access to our bonus podcast now that I'm doing with Quinn, where we talk about movies and video games and stuff. Uh, there's also a credits podcast you can be an executive producer on. That's a fun time where we get random people to talk about my bussy, if you're interested in that sort of thing. That's out of context. I realized that sounded wild. It makes sense if you listen to the credits. <laughs> It really isn't that weird. Uh, but yeah, that's me. I'm going to be playing a character of the season. I think we're just doing player introductions now. So Austin Yorsky is what you need to know. Yeah, we're going to do player introductions for now because we're going to start sort of in, in story in a minute. And that's when I'm going to give you all a good opportunity to introduce your characters and do some cool shit so that everyone knows how cool of a D&D &D player you are. Uh, who, who else is playing D&D &D, though? Uh, yeah, th that'll put me next. Hi, I'm Dan. This time I'm in the big big boy big girl season uh i did this by breaking into austin's house after joa gave me his address foolishly uh and pestering him until i was allowed in uh you can't find me anywhere i am not an uh, internet content creator uh so if you need to find me i'm still in austin's house eating his snacks you you create this podcaster an internet content creator now whether you like it or not i'm an unpaid intern 
<laughs> I mean, look, it, it, whether it's unpaid or not, it's content and it's on the internet. You, you can't squirrel out of this one. Joa said to me before we started recording, which which group is it tonight? And I said, oh, you know, Laura, Dan, and Skitch. And she said, oh, the nerds. And I was like, <laughs> what does that make the other team? And she says, the jocks. <laughs> I'm, I, d- what, which, is, what does that make me that I'm on both the nerds and the jocks? What am I now? Laura, you and I are uh, student athletes, obviously. Ooh. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I, I wonder how Leon's going to respond to being called a jock. That's a. Have you seen him? <laughs> He's he's incredibly uh, athletic and sexy. He used to have a six pack. It's a whole thing. I mean, yes. I mean, all of that's true. I'm just kind of curious how he would respond to that. Is all I'm of, saying, you know, by flexing. Uh, of of <laughs> the things of the two that I could be, I am definitely the nerd more than the jock, uh, as demonstrated by the fact I have 31 pages of a notebook currently filled ahead of this first session. I've made so many notes. Hell yeah. Uh, I have asthma. Hell yeah. <laughs> My, I, I'm sorry. I just need to mention this because it reminded me. My uh, my girlfriend's not into D and D, and her friends aren't. It's just outside of her her worldview. She looked at the starter guide for Five E, got a page in, saw a table, and panicked and put it down. <laughs> um, her her best friend, when told that I play D and D, just assumed that I dressed up every time <laughs> I did it. And what you don't? Her, oh and shit! And her her husband, when told that I play D and D, said. That shit from Stranger Things? <laughs> That's real? Yeah, yeah, that shit from Stranger Things is real. And we've got at least one other person here playing that shit from Stranger Things. Who's our other player? Wait, wait, I'm from Stranger Things? Okay. <laughs> Sketch from Stranger Things. Sketch from Stranger Things. The uh, famously Sketch from Stranger Things. Uh, yeah, my name is Michael Skitchiano, or better, just call me Skitch. Uh, I'm Skitch Music on Twitter. Um I uh, I do production assistance on Dice Funk in terms of audio and video related stuff. Uh, I, I I somehow wrangle this stuff to make it easier to edit, and effectively, I'm also the walking compendium of rules for Fifth Edition when necessary. Um, but yeah, it's just fun to be another player on the show. It's also fun to work with a a new a new DM to create stories with. And uh, if people are wondering if I have way too much background materials written up for this character this season of course i do of course of course you do this is this is your thing and we did have to go okay well we're gonna parcel some of this out you're gonna have a little bit of lore at a time because we cannot jump right into 13 plot critical things session one (laughs) i do like the idea of laura patting you on the head and being like if you're good you can have a little lore let's (laughs) see how you behave i I may i may have uh, parceled out you can have some more lore if you want to use your downtime scene for more lore. You can, you can have a little bit of lore every every little narrative arc. As as silly as it sounds, this is literally what the conversation was like before. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You know, it's like it's the it's okay to cut back on backstory stuff. I, um, I mean, from from my end, it's mainly because I'm doing a half length season because I'm, right. I'm sharing DMing duties with Austin, and I was like, there's only so many plot points that I can hit with like maybe sixteen or so episodes. Uh, yeah, we, we we got the exp- we got plenty of Google documents for the expanded universe for the fans. We don't need to have it all on air. So yeah, you know. exactly. Well. I feel like I should probably start setting the scene as to this other uh, other side of the campaign and painting a little bit of a picture of where our characters find themselves in some dramatic action at the start of today's uh, story. Um, you are the crew of a small strike team. Uh, your mission is essentially to go do whatever needs to be done on, on a particular moment's notice. That might be... Um, Exploring dangerous mysteries, helping facilitate peace, fighting people who seek to harm the innocent, saving people in distress. You are just a little team that is sent out when, you know, people who are ready for action need to be sent somewhere. Um, as for the name of your crew, the name of your little strike strike team, we'll leave that for in character. I'm sure that'll, uh, that'll come up when we get there. But uh, we tune in today to see the crew of our adventure at the tail end of a daring escape from a space station. A huge power signal made your crew think that perhaps there was a new kind of fuel source being developed on this space station. It turns out, it was some bozogs trying to create NFTs. Non-fungible oh. targets. <laughs> uh, 
uh, for anyone who is new to Dice Funk, uh, Bozogs are a species that exists within the Dice Funk uh, universe. They are basically birds that do very good kicks. Uh, they've been creating these non-fungible targets in the hopes of uh, having something they can practice kicks against that won't just break into pieces. Uh, needs to be non-fungible for that, but... NFTs have been banned galaxy-wide because they are dangerously wasteful in terms of energy consumption to produce and transfer. Uh, that is the, 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 the dangerous energy readings you were getting on this space station was NFT production. We join our adventurers fleeing the station, which has just gone into meltdown unprovoked. Too many overclocked rigs trying to make those non-fungible targets. <laughs> oh no, the, the station's being rug pulled. Oh no. Exactly. Now I think this is a good moment for if anyone would like to introduce their character, uh, we will jump right into some adventure. Uh, I'm sorry, we just opened up with this. I'm already losing it. <laughs> I, I feel like this introduction should be done in terms of movement speed. Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> I actually have far and away the highest movement speed as a unarmed, uh, arm, unarmored barbarian and a fairy. Uh, so I have a fly speed and an extremely fast class speed on top of that. So I am zooming through the hallways. Uh, also, first in alphabetical order, suck it once again. Here I go. <laughs> well, who who are you and what lets you go super speedy? Well, tell tell me your deal. My deal is that I am a level nine barbarian. Uh, my class uh, uh, specialty is wild magic. Uh, I'm a wild magic barbarian specifically. I ran this by Laura because I wanted to see if you would be uh, interested in doing a custom wild magic table, which you have hidden from me. I, I was very excited. I couldn't share this wild magic table you with you even if I wanted to. It's entirely <laughs> written on paper in a notebook, very hastily scribbled over, over the festive period. It was a lot of like being a little bit drunk and going, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Hell Love yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've done Wild Magic on the show before. We like to have a little bit more yeah. fun with it than Wizards of the Coast uh, would advise. Uh, but <laughs> that, that's the kind of barbarian I am, a later edition, not in the player's handbook. Uh, as I said before, my uh, you know race, as it's called in 5th edition, is fairy. But I'm a, a bit of an unusual fairy. We've never done fairies in uh, Dice Funk before. Um, and you know this season, a lot of it's going to center around uh, relations with uh, Illithids, one of the key villains of uh, the D&D world. And so I wanted to have at least one player character be uh, a mind flayer. So my character is actually a mind flayer fairy, uh, something that does not exist in canon. Couldn't find any art of it <laughs> for any of my uh, notes or for Roll20 or anything. I don't think anyone has ever drawn this. I had to go to one of those uh, terrible, never use them, they're terribly unethical. I did go to an AI art generation <laughs> program to generate an illithid fairy, and I think it did a pretty decent job. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's what this is. I was like, Laura found something here. It is spooky. It is uh, it's, tentacly it's, it's got and wingy. wings and a lot of tentacles. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty I, cool. I, I am going to interject a small thing here. There's going to be a subset of fans who's going to try to actually you about this, Austin, because Joe did play a fairy in one shard point episode, mm. and they're yeah. and they're going to think, yeah. But I'm like, we're talking main series dice funk. No one's been a fairy. Yeah, Joe was actually very helpful in making this character. She was thinking about being a player character on this season. Uh, she was, you know, uh, workshopping a, a robot character. And we were talking about wild magic bar barbarians, how interesting they could be. And I hit upon this idea through those talks about the thing I thought was interesting here, which is there's a weapon in the player's handbook no one ever uses. It's the lance. Mm. The lance has a great reach and does really good damage, uh, but the problem is you can't use it at close range. If you ever run up on somebody with it, they will get up in your grill and then you won't be able to fight because your weapon's so long. And then I realized a way to mitigate this and actually use this weapon no one ever uses would be to have a fly speed and attack from the sky. Uh, that way you could always be at range. And this uh, intrigued me so much. It's so unique. I've never seen it. In any actual play I've ever, uh, you know, watched or listened to or anything, uh, I decided to make yeah this fairy barbarian who attacks with a reflavored lance specifically because she's small. She uses an ice pick, which if you've ever you know seen these things, they're they're kind of wicked l l little tools. But she for for her size, it is like a mighty lance. Uh, that she attacks from the sky. Um, her backstory is that basically she is the result of a, a revanchist mind flayer uh, ritual. Basically, they try to make the ultimate spy by using enlarge reduce <laughs> to make an enlarged fairy and a reduced tadpole and combine them to have like the uh, super loyal 
mind flare fairy. Um, and she did that for a long time. She's an incredible, you know, ninth level spy. But eventually she got disillusioned with uh, mind flare irredentism, basically trying to spread, you know, traditional mind flare values. Uh, and she defected to the Rezubian and is now part of their strike team trying to undo the damage she's done. Uh, her alignment is lawful evil. And I want to uh, allay everyone's fears that mostly, you know, in Dice Funk, alignment is not a uh, supernatural force that makes you do things. It is kind of a description of weighing your heart against a feather. She's done a lot of bad things in her life, um, and she's willing to do more to fix it. So that's the evil. The lawful is that she is committed to the cause. Exactly. Um... I, I think one thing that we glossed over that is worth mentioning as well is you are a wild magic barbarian, which is not usually a class that people associate with wild magic. Um, yeah, the way we're, we're going to be running this is that any time you go into a barbarian rage, things are going to occur. And we're going to roll a hundred-sided dice and just see how much my campaign gets ruined like episode one yeah <laughs> every time every time combat breaks out there's just going to be a wave of weirdness uh that emanates from her in fact she has a an unusual unusual uh nature it's i believe it's called um a, a wild thing for being a fairy fairy magic so she has some some spells here uh her background is spy because that's what she was uh which gives me a criminal contact and I, i'm kind of i gave laura a couple of ideas for cool mind flayers that don't show up in canon and said, you know, one of them may be my contact, maybe one of them is out to get me because I still believe in the revanchist cause and I'm a traitor to it. So there's some there's some mind flayers out there who have opinions about me. Um, but uh, so barbarian, spy, lawful evil, level nine, uh, and then uh, she has a name that was given to give to <laughs> given to her uh, by the mind flayers, and it's unpronounceable without uh, the mind flayer uh, mouth and deep speech. It involves you know like uh, un, uh, uh, psychic pulses and unnatural grinding and stuff. Uh, but to <laughs> to fit in with common people, people who speak common, that is, uh, she scanned uh, Earth. Uh, pop culture for things that were very beloved. She wants to fit in, uh, and she decided that the most uh, likable name would be Wendy McDonald. <laughs> there was a moment where you suggested this to me, and I just... I don't know whether whether it was brilliance or exhaustion, but I, I put up zero resistance. I was like, yep, you're Wendy McDonald. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to be. She's trying to be nice and sociable. She's not very good at it. She has dog shit uh, charisma and intelligence and stuff. Just because she doesn't really know what it's like to be outside of a kind of uh, spy as part of a hive mind, but she's trying her best. Um, I will say the only other thing that comes to mind as far as this character goes is the speed. As we talked about, I have forty speed, uh, which is you know much higher than say like twenty five that many base characters get so i am just simply flying down this hallway hell for leather as we in media res into the space station <laughs> yeah you are a combination of like speedy tiny and able to get up in the air which is all things that are going to be very good for staying alive on a crew of people who have to go on dangerous missions uh who else do we have being chased by a group of angry bozog that blame you for their nfts <sighs> overheating <laughs> do we go by speed or alphabet in this case dan I think it's got to be speed. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> All right. So um, running, uh, uh, following Wendy McDonald through the, the the unnaturally twisting hallways of this space station is uh, what appears to be a an anthropomorphic Arctic fox. Um, my character's name is... Uh, my character is an Ardling. Uh, Ardling is a species that is being introduced in 1D&D &D whenever that comes out. I'm using one of the UA versions of it. Um, their, name is, uh, their name is Max Ina. Their full title is Max Ina the Eternal Wind, and they are a ninth level Hexblade Warlock. Uh, we are going to do our own twist on Hexblade, which we'll dive into later on. But they, um, they, uh, they are a former pilot. That's their background is listed as former pilot. They used to be a pilot in a t crew of spacefaring Ardlings in a uh, military force known as Ardwing, um, <laughs> where they uh, were honorably discharged, at least not dishonorably discharged after a few mishaps on missions due to their uh, tendency to go out of formation and be a little too reckless for their own good for most missions and such. 
So, uh, you had to be let go. The uh, the the uh, the little frog on the team was just very tired of telling you to get back there because they were getting shot at. Right, 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 right. A <laughs> uh, trippy was definitely not happy with those uh, <laughs> mishaps there from Max. But yeah, so Max has joined Resubian along with a friend of theirs that we can possibly touch base on later on. After finding an opportunity to get away from home, um, and just go off and do things. They've somehow come into uh, possession of a weird, I'm going to describe it as sort of like a floating cube type thing that floats along with them as they're running through the hallway with a laser pistol in hand. And uh, because they're an Ardling, one of the features in the UA they have is the ability to do bonus action sprout celestial wings and fly around for a turn so they're using that as an opportunity to get a little extra speed when necessary but yeah max is a neutral good in terms of alignment being a celestial entity it kind of tracks for that um but yes uh they are if you want to think like a celestial star fox protagonist sure that's a good mental image for you right there i think the one of the first pitches that austin gave when we were talking about this character was like star fox with a lightsaber was the uh <laughs> one of the elevator pitches it's not quite a lightsaber but it is a weird magical weapon that we'll be able to dive deeper into as we go along so wonderful uh, I feel like before we get into the final character, this is probably a good point to just get on on the record for for listeners. Uh, character pronouns. We should probably get those out there. Oh yeah, I should do that. Austin Yorsky is he him. Wendy McDonald she her. Uh, Mike Scicciano is he they. Max Ina is they them. Uh, Dan he him character unnamed so far. <laughs> Char- he, Dan him. name name character go who who are you who who else who's carrying up the rear of this uh, b- being shouted at by all the bozogs going stop stop uh, stop trying to tell us we're not going to go to the moon with our non fungible targets. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make so many of them we'll stack them to the moon it'll be great. <laughs> Uh, coming in at a blistering uh, 20 feet <laughs> per move action <laughs> is Buford F. Gubbins. Uh, he is a mountain of a man at 7 feet tall and 600 pounds. Uh, <laughs> he is a master maker artificer. Uh, and what that means is that po- large portions of his body have been completely replaced with cybernetic hardware. Um Easiest way to describe him, uh, if you bolted a bunch of industrial equipment onto a space trucker uh, wearing a Jason Voorhees cyber mask, uh, he is essentially firing uh, a flamethrower over his shoulder to try to keep these Bozogs off of him as he's <laughs> trundling forward, uh, ripping things off the walls to to, to make... Um, uh, blockages before him. Uh, most important thing about Buford is that he is completely lopsided. His right arm is probably about two and a half times bigger than it should be. It is a giant battle fist. Uh, that is the key feature of the Master Maker. They replace one of their limbs with a, a, ro- a robotic battle arm. Uh, as as are his legs. He doesn't really wear a shirt because a lot, like his entire right side of his chest has been cyberized just to support this um, uh, this uh, industrial arm, uh, which, by the way, has a uh, uh, spray painted onto it uh, a heart with the word mom in it, like in a classic American uh, style tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you can't have you can't have a big trucker arm, the kind that you'd be leading out the window as you drive down the, the highway getting a sunburn on it without the mom tattoo. That's just how it goes. Exactly. Uh, and his background is is it engineer uh, for reasons that are related to him making his arm. He's a he's a master engineer. Uh, Buford does not care about the cause. He isn't here for your your ideology. He is solely here because he loves his family who joined up for this cause. Uh, he'll murder anyone that gets in the way of their their happiness. And uh, yeah, he's he's just an all around family man. He's chaotic neutral and does not care about your authority. Yeah, this this was a fun one for me when you pitched this. It was like, hey, I'm, I, I'd like to play a character who does not give a solitary fuck about the mission that, that everyone is on. I'm like, yeah, but you've OK, you've got an NPC. Who cares? Cool. That's fine. I, I will just make sure that they continue to care very much about uh, 
about the things that we need you to care about. <laughs> oh, yeah. B- Buford, uh, Buford will do anything for his family. So yeah. you, you, you tell him to jump, he'll obliterate whoever. He does not care about these mind flayers. Take him or leave him, whatever. Um, yeah. Normally, a character being actively disinterested in the premise is a huge red flag. But if you've listened to last season, you know Dan is an incredibly talented role player, and I have faith in him. Yeah. Pull this off <laughs> for sure. Like I'm, I, like I will be honest. It, it terrified me when I heard it. As like I, you know, I've I've DM'd like one shots and little things here and there, but being like, cool, gonna do gonna do proper proper campaign on the air. Oh, oh no, this is okay. Okay, let's talk this through. It's gonna be fine. But actually, I very much like what you have in mind. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, only only other thing about Buford, I guess, since there was a little bit of back other backstory stuff said about other characters, uh, Buford is a known element in space. His family runs a company called Gubbins Triple S, uh, Shipping Security Satisfaction, <laughs> uh, and he was in charge of keeping shipments and uh, warehouses safe. And he did this through a campaign of fire and blood against anyone that ever crossed his family. <laughs> Yeah, we're all level nine, so certified badasses. Yeah. I think uh, we're, like, we're running down this hallway, and Wendy yells back, like, hurry up, Gub Gub! You're holding us up! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, considering you are sort of being chased, and I'm pretty confident that Bozogs are faster than uh, at least one of your party members, are you doing anything as you flee away to uh, put put some space or slow them down or to get yourself a bit more time to to get away? Oh, this is a great question. I mean, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm definitely turning to Max and being like, Maxi, Max, Max, does your little cube teleport? Can you teleport us out of here? I can. Oh, let me think here. Uh, uh, one second. Hey, big guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and with that, uh, Max will um, basically jump towards Buford to just sort of land and clutch onto the big guy before just like, slap in uh, a hand on the mom tattoo and cast fly Ooh. on Buford. Uh, I think, I think I know the perfect way that this uh, act uh, works because I, I plan for it. Cause uh, these are spells I also have access to. Uh, <laughs> you do, you pr- slap your hand on the mom marking and it depresses in with a click. <gasps> Uh, and you activate the jet boosters in his robotic foot and arm, and he starts flying forwards. Now, now, because because uh, he's he's a bit lopsided on the mechanics, uh, does that make it in any way difficult to go in a straight line when flying? Uh, yeah. So he his uh, his right arm has been completely replaced, as has his uh, left leg below the knee. His right leg is just using like a regular rocket boot. So it's he's a very it's not a, it's not a good path. I I, I will point out <laughs> that uh, Max can actually target three people total whenever they cast fly. And I would like to petition, can I pilot Buford as a vessel, given the fact that Max does have proficiency with space vehicles? Oh, my God. (laughs) Here we go. It begins, Laura. I welcome to the Thunderdome. This is how it is. I mean, look, I'm not going to give you any mechanical benefit for doing so, but if you want to... uh, I, give give me a dex. Uh, what's it gonna be? Give me a dexterity roll to hold on, because the way I picture our slightly lopsided uh, jet boost uh, from Buford is that it's a little bit of a Catherine wheel situation. It's going forward, oh, yeah. but it's spinning a bit because uh, one arm, one leg. <laughs> well, give me, let, give let me, me a dex me to see if you hold on. <laughs> okay. Let me make a suggestion. Uh, so I I do think both legs have like propulsion on them, but the arm is definitely throwing them off. What if yeah. what if Max hangs off his left side, which doesn't have a giant arm? I I like to think that you're spinning like a corkscrew as you go. So Max is just sort of like terp, like try to fight uh, centripetal forces. You, you know what? If you cling on to the left arm, uh, give me a dex roll still, but I I'm gonna slightly change what what I'm looking for on it. So give give me that dex roll. That'd be an eighteen. Oh yeah, no, that that that's plenty. That's perfect. Uh, you have balanced out Buford uh, pretty well, and now you are gliding forward at least well enough to like keep the distance from the Bozog separate. Um, now, as you you sort of continue sprinting down the hallway, trying to get to some way off this ship, um, 
There is, uh, there is a series of locked doors in front of you. Um, that. They seem like they're going to be a problem. They are they are right in front of you down the hallway. They are going to slow down your escape. There are not any obvious turnings around here. There is there's, there's some there's you know a little crack under the door, but I don't I can't think of any way that any player who's here could exploit <laughs> that to do something cool to show off their character. I would love to do this. Yes. So I have enlarge reduce as part of my fairy magic. Like I said, it's part of the ritual that was used to create me. It's like my signature thing. I'm already tiny. Um, so if I can uh, reduce myself and slip under the door and unlock it from the other side, I would love to do that. Ex that is indeed a thing you can do. Now, is it railroading if I've set it up purely for episode one to tell you, to show everyone how cool you are? Maybe, but it's cool railroading. <laughs> I mean, I love your, our DM styles are already showing the strengths of uh, each of our approaches. You've written jokes that are great. <laughs> You're doing this kind of stuff. I would never. Look, look, I, I, I have plans for you to have a very open ended uh, series of adventures where you can completely and utterly destroy everything I've planned. But for this first like half hour, I just I, I want to show everyone you, you, your characters are competent, at least sometimes. Um, Buford and Max just crash through the wall directly next to the door. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, it, you can if you want to. Uh, roll me a d4, see what damage it does you to go through the wall. I'll go through the door. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not telling you not to. D4's not that much damage. Go on. But I might lose four of my 75 hit points. Yeah, what what if I need those? <laughs> <laughs> is 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 this is Buford that precious about health or <laughs> No but dead is dead <laughs> I mean look look I'm I'm just gonna put this out there. I don't think uh, pl listeners, I don't think Dan needs to worry too much about his hit points. His AC is ridiculous, and we'll I'm sure that will come up eventually. <laughs> it gets worse in a level. <laughs> yeah, it does. I I am aware I am aware it gets worse. Um so as you continue sort of winding your way down the corridors, uh, trying to find your way towards uh, the, the exit of the ship, uh, you come across a, uh, a section that you came through on your way into this, uh, this, sp uh, this space station. It was a sort of uh, mechanical uh, raised bridge. And during all of the chaos and the commotion, uh, it seems to have broken in the raised position. You can no longer run across this... Uh, technologically powered mechanical bridge that would uh, that, that would have been your way out. I wonder if anyone's got any anything they could do about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I see the bait here. I must point out we're all flying right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look. I put this here. You can fly over right, it. Yeah. If you want to fly over it, you are more than welcome, and that is great. Uh, I don't. I wait. Hold on. Here, here's look. here's what I do. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to um, I'm going to rip a door off its hinges. Yes. Uh, put it directly in front of the uh, the uh, exit of this raised bridge, and I am going to um. Uh, use my tinkering, uh, a magical tinkering ability to display, I think I can display a static image on the door and it's going to say rare NFT, one of a kind <laughs> behind door. Oh, perfect. Perfect. And then I assume you're all just flying over this entirely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Uh, these, these bozogs, much like in a Looney Tunes cartoon, uh, you know, they really, they, they've got wings, they could fly over this gap, but they do want to see about the rare, the rare NFT behind the door, open the door, run through it, oops, I ran into a wall. That's going to buy you at least a couple more seconds to uh, continue your escape. Um, as you're making your way back across to where you initially boarded the ship, you unfortunately don't see your, uh, your ship. Uh, it may be that your pilot, who who sort of brought you in and dropped you off, had to get out of the get out of there because, you know, the place is on fire and things are going a little south. Um, there is an escape pod. There's a bunch of bozogs trying to get into it. Well, well, it looks like we're going to have to, uh, take priority over this line here. No, what? No, it's our ship. Why? Why? No, it's ours. Get out, get off. As soon as we can work out where the where the go button is, we're out of here. 
Hey, l- l- listen, listen, listen. We all we all try to get out of here, but we need to figure out how to work this. Oh no, there's there's multiple of them. <laughs> we're all we're all trying to get out of here, but but we we have to at least figure out what the right button to press is and you know if it, no and, no no get it no get out there's only four seats in here and they're for the three of us and our stack of nfts <laughs> wendy says hey bozogs where's your ear hole well, you know that's a funny say it's none of your business where's oh. your ear hole <laughs> Bu- Bu- Buford is already like checking over the the weapon readiness of his arm and just walking forwards. Wendy was trying to get them to reveal because that's where she likes to stab. It's just right in through uh, the ear with the ice pick. Yeah, no, the 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 the, the Bozogs, in fact, as you approach, are like, no, you're not getting us. We've we you can't you can't. And they start holding up the uh, the 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 non fungible targets to use as shields to protect themselves. Uh, Max will will throw as a proposition like, if it'll make you feel better, you're more than welcome to try and kick this non fungible target in front of you, as they gesture at themselves. Is is, is the non fungible target you in in general? Because it sounded like a euphemism to me, if I'm honest. And I do like kicking things. <laughs> I mean, you, you you just try your hand kicking at me. It's completely fine. I I won't swing back at you or anything. Are you being de- are you being deceitful here, <laughs> Max? Uh, Max will uh, just sort of like put their pistol away and, and sort of raise their hands uh, and then roll a, a deception check. Yeah, give me that. Give me that deception. Uh, that's only a twelve. That's a shame, I, but. Look. I, I think for convincing them that you are not going to fight them if they leave the only escape pod, I think you're going to need more than that. They're like, no, 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 well, no. Well, I mean, they believe NFTs are on a scam, so how good are they, can they be at seeing through lies? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, as long as the lies are not, like, they're, they're pretty good in normal, regular life. It's just when it comes to the non-fungible targets that they kind of get their blinders on a little bit. Wendy says, well, I tried to do ears. It's faster, but I guess we're doing nose tonight and hits the rage. Uh, cool. Um, everyone roll me initiative and <laughs> also Austin, roll me a D100. All right. D100 coming up. And this is a sweet. Oh, that's a, I didn't mean to do that. It's a sweet succulent 90. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get everyone's initiative numbers. I got a two. I, I rolled a nine. And uh, what's what's Wendy's initiative? I actually get advantage on that, so 18. Okay, sorry, I need one second. I like to believe the only reason Buford hadn't punched that uh, Bozog's head in was because he was 30 feet away and it did not come around to his turn yet again. Now, so to describe the scene, uh, we've got three Bozog's, uh, two of which seem... Like, they're just sort of regular workers. Um, one of them was probably shoveling stuff into the uh, into the, the fossil fuel-powered uh, furnace to keep the NFT production nice and warm. Uh, has a bit beefier armor. Seems like they're going to be a little bit more of a threat, a bit more threatening. Uh, right, you rolled a 90 on the wild magic. Is that correct, Austin? That is correct. 9-0. Nine zero. Now, now this is this is interesting because we learn if high is good or bad potentially. Okay, <laughs> so I'll I'll give you this. Um, the very highest and the very lowest are very intense. The very <laughs> middle is very nothing. I've tried to somewhat spread things out between that so that it's mm. a little unpredictable. I don't want the numbers to be too much of a signifier. Um, mm-hmm. okay, here's what happens. Um. A strong smell of strawberry fills the air, and everything's getting a little tough to see. There's this very thick, cloudy, grey fog starting to fill up. Starting to fill up the room, uh, it's filling up the escape pod, it's starting to billow out into the corridor that you're all in. Um, You're all blinded by a... There's no other way to put it, It's, it's strawberry vape fog. Um, <laughs> oh gosh! Oh jeez! You, you, for, for one, for the for the next round, you are all blinded, uh, getting disadvantage on attempts to hit. 
Uh, Buford shakes his head disapprovingly, uh, saying, Faith, that shit will kill you. And then he takes a drag off of a cigar. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, all of Wendy's I, uh, items are like reflavored small things. So, like I said, her lance is an ice pick, her crowbar is a screwdriver, her javelins are nails, uh, etc. So, I think as this, you know, strawberry vape begins filling this, uh, you know, escape pod bay, uh, she unsheathes her, her ice pick and says, Welcome to my Ichigo style attack. And she does reckless attack, which uh, gives me advantage, uh, which is going to cancel out the blindness that disadvantage. It will. That so it I'm, will going do. Do, I'm going to do both of my strikes here. Uh, uh, who are you targeting? One of the, one of the, uh, the regulars or the, uh, the sort of uh, slightly armored up one? For psychological purposes, I'm going to burn down the smallest people first, see if we can get a kind of uh, panicked fl- uh, fleeing going on. Uh, let's see, that's a nine and a nine! <laughs> um, a nine and a nine, that's not going to hit their AC. That's I, I like that Wendy's immediate thought was to attack the weak to cause a panic. <laughs> Buford is thinking the same thing, but he wanted to kill the strong one to cause a panic. Well, I'll, right. I'll, I'll say this. At the very least, you, you can save face a little bit because they didn't see you with the attack because of all the mm-hmm. all of the vape cloud. Yeah, I just f- uh, fly into the cloud and just start viciously stabbing the first soft target, uh, which is, I guess is one of the NFTs. And I just I impale it repeatedly over and over and over. I'm like going into a kind of, uh, you know, f- fucking frenzy here. And then when I can kind of see through the cloud, I've done nothing. It's very embarrassing. Okay. Um, well, the Bozogs are going to take their turn to attack. Uh, the, the armored Bozog is going to attempt to uh, take a swing at you because you have... You're the first person who's come in to uh, come in to try and start start fighting here. Um, let's roll <laughs> Twi- uh, twenty three with disadvantage. Big hit. Big it's, a, it's, a, hit. it's a big hit. Um, so that is going to do some some damage to Wendy. Uh, that's gonna do. She has a surprising amount of hit points because Barbarian get a lot of those, but she has a low AC of 14. She's unarmored, unshielded. She's just going in there. Oh, that, that is as much damage as it could have been. Uh, 15 damage as just a blind kick in the uh, in the strawberry vape fog comes through and, and meets its target. Nani? <laughs> I just get kicked full force in my, my strawberry fog. <laughs> Uh, and to note, that's bludgeoning damage, right? Uh, that is bludgeoning damage, yes. Okay. Yeah, I have resistance to bludgeoning while in my range. Ah, perfect. Uh, yes. So seven. Uh, uh, now the other two are, uh, the other two Bozogs, I think, are going to stumble out and find targets at random, uh, because they cannot see where they're going or where the things they need to fight are. Uh, so I'm gonna roll, uh, can I roll a d2? I know that's a flip a coin. Well, d2, uh, roll 20, let me do that. Yep. d2 is a valid. Yep. Okay, uh, one of them is gonna attack each. The first one's gonna go for Max, uh, with... What are these rolls on my <laughs> side? <laughs> a 21 to hit Max with disadvantage. All right, well, I get hit, but I, I my main question to you is... Yeah. Te- is Max able to see the target kicking them? I think Max can see the foot. Uh, vape, vape fog is not so dense that, like, once a, a kick is connected with you, you can't see it. I could do the most over. I could do the most unnecessary response to this. Oh no, no, do it. <laughs> Respond unnecessarily. Go on. All right. So, uh, I'm going to point out something for 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 later thing here. Um, uh, I'll take the damage first. Uh, 11 damage. Can I get a dexterity saving throw? Uh, seven. I doubt that's going to be high enough, yeah. Yeah, so um, one of the spells that Max has access to, but doesn't, we don't quite know where it came from, uh, is Hellish Rebuke. <laughs> um, as a reaction to taking damage, uh, a target... Uh, has to make a dexterity saving throw against 17. Uh, because they failed, they take the full brunt of it, which is 6d10 fire damage. Well. Or 
That'd be, wow, not a great roll, but that's a 27 damage. Uh, yeah, you have done some pretty substantial damage to that Bozog. That Bozog is uh, not having a good day. Um, it is now hopping around on one foot. Uh, it, it's got a blister coming up real quick, and it's it's not going to be fun uh, of a day now. Uh, yeah, but, but like, it just it, as a reflexive thing, like a uh, a blazing counterattack just kind of erupts as Max is hit, and they just sort of shake their head up. It's like, uh, well, I, hopefully that wasn't too much of a hot foot there for you. Uh, uh, and the other one's the other one's going to attack uh, going to attack Buford. Uh, now see, this is this is this is more what I was expecting with disadvantage. Uh, that is a that is a a six that is a botch to try and hit Buford. Yeah. <laughs> the the one the one and only character here who I think we needed a roll of like twenty plus with disadvantage to have a chance at. <laughs> uh, correct. I have twenty two AC. Yeah, you do. Uh, Literally, either of those first two turns would have hit you, but uh, the the dice do what the dice do. Uh, this Bozog, I think, does a flying leap through the air, being like, I'm very confident I'm going to hit you, and just goes straight past you, hits a wall, takes a little bit of damage. Um, w- Wendy's double over on the floor from pain from being kicked, and she sees that and just goes, yes, my Ichigo technique worked perfectly. You needed that help. <laughs> I think Buford just kind of watches it go by and then turns to another one of these Bozogs ready to beat something to death. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, Max, it's your turn. There is still strawberry vape fog everywhere. (laughs) Yep, yep. There's just sort of like... "Mm, Nice little trick there. All right. Looks like it's time to get to work. (sighs) Uh, So... Max sort of extends their hand out, closes their eyes, and mutters, All right, time for a decryption. Decrypt. Evan, come forth! And I, might, I probably should have thrown a reverb on that or something, but when they do that, uh, the uh, the cube that's been following them around uh, basically glows for a moment, shifts, and transplants into their hand as a morning star while at the same time a a white headband sort of somehow materializes across their head and like a little brooch of a milk thistle shows up on their jacket before Max turns and tries to swing at the nearest Bozog blindly in an attempt to get a hit in. And we'll, uh, uh, we'll do two attacks with uh, this morning star in hand. Are you going for the one that uh, that hit you? I'm guessing. Yes, that's it. Uh, the first attack is a sixteen. Uh, a sixteen will hit. So that'll be for eight piercing damage, and then the mm. second one, with disadvantage, is an eleven. Actually, no, that second attack is a botch. Ooh, that is a botch. Okay. Um. Right. How do I want to? What do I want to do about this? Uh. The first morning star hits the Bozog, and Wendy just whispers, "You fucked up now, Bozogs. It's cube time." <laughs> I, 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 um. I will. I. I have two offers for you. Um, okay. Let's let's hear them. A free attack, or a free trip from the Bozog to put Max prone. Oh, now, see, I like free trip from the Bozog. I, I think you, you, I think that the strawberry vape fog gives a perfect excuse for like, okay, yeah, you've got a hit on me, but I know where you are. Leg sweep. <laughs> like you, you, there is no bracing for this fall. You just go like face first on the floor. Pretty much. Yeah. Like Max spent like a moment like trying to be all cool, do all their, do their Sentai like transformation sequence. We wasted 30 seconds of like animation budget for the transformation. But again, it's it's no problem because there's all the vape fog everywhere. No one saw you fall. All they heard was you do a cool like, ah, oh, I'm doing a cool anime attack, and then a big thud. And you know, for all they know, you hit Bozog <laughs> really hard there. Uh, outside of this this big uh, uh, pink smoke fog, uh, like there, there's somebody just watching in, and there's like lights of the transformation sequence going on as like anime music is playing quietly, muffled by the sounds of violence. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, it, like for some reason, even though you're all in the same room, it sounds like it's in happening in the rave next door. Um, no matter what, everything is so. Yes. So Max, Max, got, Max got their weapon out, hit somebody, and is now just prone on the floor. Exactly. Uh, now we go over to Buford. Uh, okay, step one, um, locate person to murder. Uh, he will do this by calling out, I'm screenshotting your NFTs. <laughs> no, no, no. If you, if, if you, if you try and right click on our fungible targets, you'll activate the mode that makes them break apart. And that's not fair. You're not allowed to do it. Don't download, don't download how our targets work. <laughs> B- Buford, Buford, because he's a cyborg, has like a HUD, right? Yeah. Uh, that he that he looks through, uh, <laughs> built into his brain and eyes. And whenever he's seeing one of these NFTs, he's <sighs> taking a screen capture. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! You say, oh, you've got you've got hard drives in your arm. How many NFTs have you stolen? Stolen the schematics for at this point? I, I assume by the panic screaming, he's figured out where one of these are and is going to walk towards it. And then, confused by uh, Max's extended uh, transformation sequence, goes does a uh, go go gadget fist <laughs> and then punches uh, at the Bozog. You know what? I'm happy to give you to take away the disadvantage here. I I really like that you goaded goaded some angry NFT shouts out of those Bozogs. You can. Have have your uh, your non disadvantaged attack. All right, I got a twenty six. <laughs> a twenty six is gonna hit. Um, uh, I think this is gonna be the other uh, the other unarmored one. So that's how much damage? Uh, that's eleven damage, and I have a second swing at him. Thirty two damage. <laughs> uh, that is that is pretty good. Uh, both of the unarmored bozogs are looking very beaten up. They are. Uh, they they were just here to sit at a computer and watch uh, watch numbers go up as their kicks uh, their kick stocks got really really high like oh oh kick returns are great they were not here for this uh, get a real job loser hey hey when our ki- hey hey if 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 the right influencer tweets about how cool our kicks are we're gonna the, the, we're, it's gonna be through the roof uh, and now it's back around to Wendy. Uh, and I should I should say that the the, the 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 strawberry vape fog is starting to dissipate enough that you are not operating with disadvantage. It does still smell obnoxiously of imitation strawberry, like painfully so. Amazing. Yeah, she says, I don't even know what a nifty is. I just I can't let anyone who's seen me fail like this live. Uh, <laughs> wait, she wait, holds you, the... you wait, you wait, you failed. I couldn't see in all the fog. It's too late to beg for your life. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) She holds the ice pick out ahead of her and just tries to fly straight up their nose. Uh, 20 and 25 with reckless attacks. Uh, Yep, 20 and 25 are both uh, going to hit. All right. Give give me some damage. Uh, Who are you attacking? You're attacking the uh, the armored one again. The one who who kicked me, so I don't take... uh, Uh, Yeah, that uh, that was the armored one. All right. Um, right, these are all my attacks in one. Twenty-five. Uh, twenty-five? Yep, that's some, that's some decent damage you've done right there. Uh, certainly not to be sniffed at. Um, that Bozog, <laughs> not, not super happy about this, uh, and screams at you, I also can't let someone who's embarrassed me live. No one can know that my NFT kicking didn't amount to much. These were meant to make me the best kicker around. Your parents must be very disappointed. I drew I drew a gorilla on this NFT. <laughs> that sounds stupid. It's, it doesn't make any special, sense to me. It's, it's a special rare one. You wouldn't understand. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's on a board. It's in, it's in a club with other apes. <laughs> uh, 19 to hit. To hit Wendy back, absolutely. Yeah, hits. yeah. Um, so let's get let's get a good damage roll. Where are we looking at the? Yeah. All right, half because I'm in a rage. Uh, so yeah, she she has a nine in intelligence. She's not like completely uh, stupid, but she doesn't know what anything and anybody's talking about is, and she's just like, okay, this sounds dumb. I'm just gonna kill you now. We will live on forever in our unique targets that we made. Uh, next, Bozog is going to go for Max. Uh, that's going to be... With advantage. Uh, with advantage, yes, because you're prone. That's uh, right. Uh, 20 to hit. Absolutely. Yep, and let's 
Roll some damage. Just, just stop it on Max. <laughs> uh, five damage. Not a particularly hefty hit, but it's 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 a kick nonetheless. Uh, and then the last one is gonna go for Buford. Nineteen to hit is not gonna hit. Nope. <laughs> yep. All you right. you you are real hard to kick. Dan is going for the strategy I used when I was a player in season one, where I had such sky high AC I didn't get hit till the final boss fight. <laughs> oh no no don't 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 worry. Um, the the the, the reasoning I've come into this season with is uh, there's only so many times uh, uh, an enemy is going to try and kick the unkickable before going. Why am I trying to kick you? Uh, and that is that's you know there's there's only so many times that a person's going to try kicking something that that will not move. Unfortunately, I also do mondo damage. Yeah, so you do. Any time they're wasting on me is time that I'm breaking their legs. What? They need their legs. They need their legs for kicking, kicking NFTs. Don't worry. I've been looking at them bad, them bad rolls. I, 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 I know, I know what what saving throws can uh, can get past that. Not that I could have used <laughs> that knowledge, but I know, I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, look, give him a waist high fence, and it's going to take him ten minutes to climb over it. <laughs> <laughs> is, is is that it? I just have to have like some poisonous fog and a low wall. <laughs> Mm. A, a, a fucking set of wooden stairs would take this man out because they couldn't support his weight. Uh, uh, right, so we come around in the order to Max. All right, Max is going to invoke um, as a bonus action the uh, Hexblade curse feature. I'm calling it um, the. Uh, uh, we're going to touch on some names later on, but basically, Hexblade curse on the Bozite that's been stomping on him. Uh, then Max will get up. <coughs> Now that they have like an aiming reticle hovering over the Bozog, they will attempt two more attacks against them, this time without disadvantage. First attack is a 14. Uh, let me check. Uh, where am I? Uh, 14 is going to hit. All right. The second attack is a 29, which yes. is a crit in this case uh, because okay. of the <laughs> of the hexblade uh curse which makes me crit on a 19 or 20 yep give give me give me that ridiculous damage roll let's see how much you absolutely obliterate this uh this this bozog all right so that's going to be a 3d8 plus uh shoot that is 3d8 plus 20 damage there um that's 36 damage on that attack there. Uh, describe to me how you uh, defeat this Bozog. The morning star glimmers in unusual manner, and a projection of a milk thistle hovers out over the Bozog that's been downed, only to burst into petals, leaving behind the spectral projection of what looks to be a flump wielding a morning star, just like what Max is wielding. Now, are you gonna are you gonna tell people what this flump is called, or are we? Uh, I, I mean, I mean, we've talked about this before. Other people can hear the specter when it talks, so I think it can just introduce itself and just effectively. What you have is this flump creature shows up, wheels this flurry star around. It's like, okay, you, bu- okay, you buckos, it's time for you to face the wrath of me, Evangelion. Oh my god. Skitch, I've never hated you more than I do right now. I've, I've been holding I've, this on for weeks away from Austin, you, Austin. Austin, I'm not gonna lie, like, 90% of the reason that I let Skitch have that one first was because I was excited about that fucking pun. Yeah, so, yeah, the fl- <laughs> so this is a projection of when uh, Max was referencing Evan, they're referencing this particular entity, Evan, last name Jellion, the Flump, with a morning star be- be for- and a headband. <laughs> Buford kind of looks around. And is like, when I kill people, this is it's a lot more simple. I don't I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> uh, as the uh, the bozog that you knocked out is uh, losing consciousness, uh, it's gonna shout. Um, I should have sold these targets last week, but I've been left holding the bag. <laughs> <laughs> For the audience, flumps are basically uh, sapient jellyfish creatures. Yes. They're like big, uh, noodly, uh, squishy jelly fellas. So they, they, I, when... they feed off vibes. <laughs> they little vibe I, I friends. Will, I'll also note that Evan is persistent and actually has its own initiative, which happens to be, let me go ahead and roll this real quick here. 
Six. It has an initiative of six now. It's still faster than me. <laughs> I think the way I'm going to do this is that they're, they're going to join in on the next initiative round if it comes back round to them. Uh, so we will we will go to, uh, to Buford. Okay. Uh, Buford is disappointed in his current quarry. It flew into a wall and then he punched it twice in the head. Uh, he's lost interest in it. There's a big armored guy, so he's just gonna walk towards that. It can take a- the other one can take a swing at him. He does not care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you are disengaging from the- from the- the one that jumped past you, you are gonna take an attack of opportunity. Uh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so let's roll- Let's see. Can it hit you today? Can I have some of those rolls I had at the start? Those would have been. That would. Have... Okay. Well, it botched. <laughs> it uh, it botched its opportunity attack. Can, can I just wheel around and punch it in the yes, head? Yes. <laughs> do it. Roll an attack on this thing. I want to see you turn this thing to paste. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a one in return. Oh no! <laughs> you just botched at each other. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So you try and disengage from this Bozog. Uh, it tries. Uh, it gets an opportunity attack. It tries to to leap at you. Uh, completely misses, giving you an opportunity attack. And you're like, oh yeah, I'll just clothesline this thing. Uh, I think you you overestimate your swing, uh, and end up managing to hit yourself with your big giant fist. You <laughs> you, you, you underestimated this this very squirmy bird. Uh, so now. The Bozog's on the floor, you've punched yourself. You you are gonna have to, I think, roll some damage against yourself, but that isn't your attack. So if you want to do an attack still, All right, that's... I did 14 damage to myself. I, I'm much more okay with taking this than the yeah. four damage proposed earlier yeah. from hitting a wall. Take, take that 14 damage. Uh, you are now disengaged if you want to go and attack the other Bozog, if you want to do the yeah, planned I'm, attack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go try to beat that one to death. Uh, I'm going to pretend nobody saw that, and anyone that did see it's going to die before this, this combat's over, hopefully. Yeah, this is now a dignity-saving mission. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have the vape fog to save you from embarrassment okay. this time. That's uh, that's an 18? Uh, 18 is going to hit. Uh, okay. Roll, roll me that damage. Uh, that would be a... Oh, I hit two, twice by accident. Uh, 17. Uh, seven, uh, 17 damage. 17, and that's on the uh, on the big one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the big one, seen better days. Seen better days. I <laughs> I do have a second swing available. I mean, look, they're still standing. They're, they're, they're still yeah, like... Yeah, I'll, I'll swing at them. Yeah, don't... 22. Uh, 22 is going to hit uh, as, as they start screaming at you. Um... You're just a hater. You're afraid of the future. An additional 15 damage. Uh, that is going to be enough. Uh, describe to me how you take down this Bozog. Okay, so it's screaming at him, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, while its mouth is wide open, Buford just kind of plunges his giant fist directly into its mouth and kind of down its throat and then just grips whatever he can find inside and sort of inverts the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, sorry! You're just spreading fun, you know? Yeah. Uh, my, certain... my, my innards are also non fungible, I would like to hope. <laughs> You're just trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and disembowelment. This is not fair. <laughs> I want you to know I'm even more disappointed in you than your parents. <laughs> Hey, 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 they, they, their limited understanding of what I do sounded like I was doing stuff with computers. They thought I was, I was probably going to be rich one day. I'll let them know what they, what you did. I've downloaded your contacts. Is, is, is this entire ship just called the mother's basement? Is that what this whole place is called? <laughs> we, would, we would never do that to Jeff. Come no, on. no, 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 no. I, I, I think this is, um... This is the Crypto Island. Oh, it's the Crypto Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh <sighs> real substitute teacher energy in this one, I got to say. I feel, I feel like Laura is getting uh, attacked by our most goblin t- tendencies. We have set the record five botches in one recording, uh, beating the four crits uh, on the home team side. I, look, look, this is how it's going to go. Austin, you get all of the crits will be that will be ruining all of your plots because like everyone gets through everything too fast. I will be here 
going, ha ha ha, you all failed, let me describe how you trip over yourselves. It's I love it. Why, why do you think I set my AC to 22? I had to prepare for this eventuality. Well, that's fine. This this gives me time to plan things while I'm just like, oh, okay, that's another term where I can just be like, ha ha, you're on the floor. Uh, so there is only one Bozog left uh, who is looking a little bit sheepish. Um <laughs> Because you have inverted the bird, which is the phrase I'm going to use next Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Uh, I think this remaining Bozog is going to turn around and go, um, um, you know, maybe, maybe I, maybe I could remove. Th- we maybe we don't need a full seat full of NFTs, and there are four of us left in four seats. What do you say? I will turn to uh, Evan. Jellion, <laughs> the spectral flump, and say, uh, Mr. Gel Gel, is it true that these things are valuable? These nifties? I don't know anything about this. I mean, I mean, it seems it seems awfully mean of us to to, to, to leave someone behind if we've got the sea. I mean, I, I don't know much about these these things, but like I reckon we could I reckon we could squeeze them all in probably. I think. They seem appreciative. The vibes the, the vibes would be tasty. Now, now, this is an important question I must pose. Uh, Max is a normal-sized person. Wendy is quite small. Buford is extremely oversized. How does this work vis-a-vis seats taken? Uh, the way I picture this is that you, uh, Buford, is taking up two seats. Max is taking up a regular seat. I think that Wendy, there is room to, 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 to nestle in somewhere and still have essentially a full seat empty. Uh, assuming that Wendy is not going to be like, no, that's my that's my seat. Get out. Yeah, I think Wendy has a moment here. You know, she has uh, blood slicking her ice pick. Uh, she's you know been trained to do some dark stuff, and she wants to uh, kill the Bozog on some level and eat his brains. She struggles with her illithid hunger. Uh, but hearing from you know the the flump spirit uh, that there's enough room for everyone, uh, after a moment of hesitation, she says, "Mr. Gel Gel says you can live. Get in the pod. Get in the pod. Or I'm gonna eat your brain. You have five seconds. Oh. Get in the pod. Oh, thank you. I'm coming. I'm coming. Thank you. I'm in. I'm in. I'm th- thank you. <laughs> uh, can, be, before we exit this place, can Buford try to get into the the hard drive of this uh, the this hard drive of this uh, space station <laughs> server and just delete <laughs> everything?" <laughs> Now, see, I'm more than happy for you to do that. I do need to work out what kind of role it's going to be to download as many NFTs as you can <laughs> in oh, very quick oh, succession. I'm not downloading them. I am clicking the root directory and doing shift delete. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, uh, give, give me one second. I mean, to me, Web3 is kind of a religion, you know? I, well, I'd argue <laughs> it's uh, it's magic, thus it's our god. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was go- I was going to argue um, investigation because you've got to find where the root directory is. P- perfect, I've got a nine I, in I, that. I, I, I'm arguing sleight of hand because I'm assuming that the keyboard is not sized for Buford's hands. <laughs> I got a, I got a sixteen. <laughs> yeah, that is that is enough for you to wipe the uh, the station's entire hard drive of schematics for these non fungible targets. They no longer have. The blueprints they would need to 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 manufacture more of these. Uh, you have destroyed the non fungible target industry for decades to come. <laughs> I, I need I need it to be known. He did not do this out of the goodness of his heart. He thought it'd be funny. I, you, 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 just, you got rid of the white papers. Oh no. As we all make our way to the escape pod, uh, I want to do a role play thing here. Not really anything mechanical. I want to roll a constitution saving throw to try to see if I can avoid scooping up some of the brains of the inverted bird <laughs> that uh, Buford Oh, did. I love it. I love it. Because she... 100%. Yeah, she ha- she's struggling. It's, uh, you know, I have this uh, caffeine addiction that makes this all very relatable to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a 20. That's a 20. Hell yeah. So Hell she yeah. pushes it away. She thinks about uh, She thinks about manga or something instead to distract herself. <laughs> As, as I'll, I'll just kind of note on the side while you're looking things up. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that we've done enough missions that this is not the first time that the others have seen a uh, projection happening like this with Evan. But yeah, I, I think that this is a regular enough occurrence that like the crew are not necessarily surprised to see it happen. Um, I think 
it's going to be up to you how much or how little you've told the group about it, but we can have that conversation in, uh, in character in a minute. Uh, Austin, my only question for you, are you all right with me imposing those roles on you uh, throughout this season? Absolutely. It's a, it's actually her... F- Wonderful. It's her flaw on her character sheet. Struggles with hunger for brains in the absence of her elder brain. Um, so traditionally, Indeed. illithid colonies have an elder brain, uh, which is kind of the center of a hive mind where they're all connected. And she has been disconnected from her creator's uh, elder brain. So there's like a there's a loss. There's a loneliness she's, she's kind of feeling um, and yeah. she's fighting against. I, it's... It, it's, it's one of those things that I, I'm aware of about your character and I have some plans for for certain, but it's one of those, like, I like the idea of there being a mechanical thing that we can sort of regularly throw throw, throw around. Uh, it is good good to know, good to have in the back pocket. Um, if Has anyone else got anything else they want to do before the uh, escape shuttle uh, starts making its way off of the station? Uh, B- Buford's cleaning his arm uh, to get uh, all the, the bird guts off of it and, and he's looking at it and he, he gets like real close to it for a moment and he, he pulls a tooth out of his arm <laughs> and he's looking at it and he goes this is, this is a human tooth <laughs> how long has that been there <laughs> that's great are you growing replacements or something <sighs> he, he's just like looking at it and turning it over like what When's the last time I punched a human? <laughs> this is some real crimes of the future shit. I love it. <laughs> uh, um, so your your escape shuttle uh, is is leaving the station. You manage to get a, a get away as this thing starts to have more and more explosions going on. It's not looking in a great state. And uh, a couple of minutes after this all goes down, you do see your ship returning, uh, presumably having had to do the equivalent of I'll just drive around the block and come back in a minute when you're ready to be picked up. Uh, and as as it sort of pulls up and, and opens up for you to dock, uh, you are greeted by the uh, the pilot who is uh, who is currently shepherding you back to the, uh, the big main ship. Um... Skitch, do you want to describe Cammy? Yes. Yeah, Cammy is also, yeah, she is also a fox ardling, but she's a cape fox as opposed to Max's arctic fox. Um, You're telling me they make foxes with capes now? (laughs) (laughs) New fox just dropped. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, for anyone who doesn't know cape foxes, very small head, very big ears. Yeah, they're on some fennec shit. It's rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but Cammy, uh, for small backstory point before we go into for uh Cammy and Max were basically next door neighbors and childhood friends. Uh frequently when Max needed to just get away from home, they would just hide over at Cammy's place for a bit. That was the type of the, the, the friendship that they kind of had. And when Max had an opportunity to join Razubi and Cammy joined along. Um her main role in the whole thing is that she is um she could, you know, pilot as necessary, but she's also a bit of an engineer herself with a specialization in personal, like in weapons, effectively personal weapons. And, you know, there's a she has a different approach and tactic than, let's say, Buford does when it comes to engineering. Um, but she uh, uh, she she's the one who, for example, designed uh, Max's laser pistol that has not been shot yet. <laughs> um yeah. Um, the, the the way I picture this is that Cammy uh, uh, piloting this ship is not necessarily normal in any sense. This is uh, not usually to be expected. But I think that uh, as as she pulls up, uh, she's she's gonna go. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm I'm sorry, I'm late. Um, uh, previous pilot got called back, and I had a new cruise control chip that I really wanted to test out, and when I realized it was time for you guys to get picked up, I begged and I pleaded, and they let me They let me take the thing. I didn't tell them I was using experimental tech to get it here, but it got here. It got here at a very steady, reasonable pace. I hope you're all okay. There's a lot of explosions. Are you all good? Everyone that matters is okay. <laughs> plus, we have a, plus, we have someone that's joining us, it looks like. Oh, we're taking them with us onto the, the, the new ship? I mean, it's either that or leave him out here to be stranded. I mean, if if it, uh, I mean, if 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 you'd like to know how to make very very strong shields, I am I think the only one left alive that knows how to make them. 
I can make you NFTs. Wendy is wiping the blood off her ice pick on the Bozog's beautiful feathers. <laughs> or I mean, never. Or I could never make another NFT again. Your choice. Whatever would be most helpful. I think we're supposed to take prisoners back to the captain. This isn't really for us. We're kind of grunts here. Okay. Okay, well, that seems yeah, probably yeah. better than leaving me in the pod alone. I don't know how long I'll be drifting. All my friends yeah. are dead. It seems more humane anyway, so, yeah. We, it, we really, it do be like that sometimes. We really, we really should have had more than one escape pod that seats four people for an entire space station. We were a little too busy designing the NFTs to think about safety procedures. Uh, yeah, your engineering is frankly awful. That was that was depressing. I mean, we were very, very well engineered on the NFTs. Uh, yeah, and I deleted all of them. So you know how could how good what, could you? What be? even 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 the ones that are knockoff pocket creatures? And absolutely. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Not the pocket guys. <laughs> not, not not the pocket fellas. <laughs> not the pocket. I'm dudes. just kidding. I left them there. Oh. Uh, uh, I lied. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am very confused. Uh, Cammy's Cammy's gonna uh, turn around and go. Uh, so uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna set this thing he- heading back. Uh, if 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 we're all all good. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a little while. Um, the uh, the cruise control ship the. Uh, uh, the speed controls on on it aren't great, uh, but we'll get there. We will get back. So, uh, I hope you brought a game or something to do hmm. until we get back. Well, I mean, Cammy, it's better safe than never, right? You know, so exactly. And and it's working. The ship is moving, mm-hmm. and that is that was the goal, and it's doing it. So I'm. Sh- Sure, it'll work. It's it's good. <laughs> when uh when Max says uh better safe than never, Buford puts his hand on uh Max's shoulder and goes, "You have clearly never worked in the shipping industry." <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about just in time delivery. It's a clusterfuck. <laughs> Um, Wendy actually has proficiency in games. That's one of the things I took, uh, as my yeah. part of my spy stuff, I took spy tools or, you know, uh, thieves tools, but I also took gaming sets. Are there any, uh, popular games here in Illithid space that she would be into? I left a blank space. I was like, we could default to some of the games we've talked about in the show before. It could um, be a new one. I, I, I left this open cause I, I wanted to give space for if anyone had any, any thoughts in character as to... Games that might be popular in uh, in in amongst this this whole thing. So if anyone's got any ideas for space games, now, now I I have two suggestions. Uh, number one, I I fully believe that Buford has downloaded the equivalent of uh, Magic Arena into his head to play during <laughs> meetings he doesn't care about. Yeah, in like a, in like a minimized window in his HUD that he's just flicking through with his eyes to play the cards. Uh, two. I'm going to have to suggest knock off 40k because I'm a monster. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of magic slash Yu-Gi-Oh over the years. So I'm more interested in definitely the 40k style thing where she is like, yeah, trying trying to use. It would be a psychic game, right? Because if it's popular with Illithids, the psionic mm-hmm. denizens of the space, it would be like you get to paint your models in your mind. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I I feel like uh, war games would be very popular with uh, psionic creatures because I feel like there would be some degree of um oh yeah yeah no I totally know what you're about to do I I, I can I can see like seven or eight moves ahead of you um, well, um, well with Illithids being like hey I'm moving my pawns and slaves around the board to kill people for me absolutely they'd love that yeah it has <laughs> unprecedented depth because your your mind is so complex right you can you can like read your opponent's moves and stuff I, I'm really liking this I think she when uh, Cammy the pilot says it's gonna be a while maybe you can play a game Wendy just flutters over to Buford and just like lands on your big arm and just says like best of three and closes her eyes and tries to psionically <laughs> connect with you doesn't even ask uh, <laughs> yeah I, I think this is the only case where buford is okay with this uh in any other scenario he doesn't like people like going into his head for a variety of reasons but to to play a game to occupy his time yeah he'll 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 do that no problem 
Wendy doesn't have the best boundaries, especially psionically. She's like, oh, I'm a spy. Everyone's thoughts are mine. <laughs> My job is to get the thoughts and it's not really up to you. Uh, but she only really is interested in playing the game with you. So she, yeah, she, she's like, oh, there's could be other stuff in here, but she doesn't care. So she connects. Uh, I have proficiency, so I would roll with that. Uh, I assume a raw yeah. d20 on your uh, turn. I was going to I was going to say roll d20. You've got proficiency. All right. Uh, eight, not great. Ooh. All right. Now, here, here's a fun thing about Dan's setup, by the way. I can't see my hands right now because I've got a big box made out of cardboard, pantyhose, and foam in front of me to hold my <laughs> microphone. So I'm trying to type roll 1d20 without seeing my hands. I got a 16. <laughs> you, you, wonderful. Uh, talk, talk to me through how, how, how you managed to beat someone who was literally in your brain seeing your moves. Okay, uh, so I, I think the way this works is that um, Buford, despite his looks, is actually extremely smart, <laughs> uh, and he's very tactical, and he is used to putting up a lot of like uh, subterfuge, essentially, with what he's thinking and what he's doing. Uh, and as a result, when you're just looking at him as a surface level, his army is probably like a heavy mechanized, like a uh, bunch of like big robots and vehicles, that sort of thing. So you think he's just going to walk forward and try to kill you. Uh, but instead, there's a lot of like throwing out bait with uh, like repair mechanics to try to get you to expose your your uh, high damage targets uh, that he then uh, counters with like pincers to, uh, to really crush you uh, early on. This is a case of of you being underestimated. It seems a sort of like yes, yeah. It, it can't. Yeah, this seems so obvious that it must be obvious. Oh no. Yeah, as an artificer, you actually have genius level intelligence. You have maxed out intelligence, and that is my worst stat. So yeah, you're you're doing all these like you know three D four D chess moves or whatever, and I'm just like big guys in the front. Little guys in the back, <laughs> and you are just running my ass over. Uh, so that's great. Ah, I see. I, yes, I see the uh, the loser's gambit. I'm very familiar with this move here. <laughs> yeah. To to quote to quote um, uh, myself in a, a line that I really like. Austin's playing chess. I'm eating the pieces. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so while we're while we're playing, I'm curious: is the flump spirit hanging around? Like, is this just yep. a thing that's there? Okay, interesting. I didn't. I don't know all the reflavoring on these warlock abilities. Well, the the specter thing that hexblades can make stays around until the end of your next long rest. So yeah. sick. Uh, yeah. Ev Evan's just hanging out. Um, I think the way that this goes is that Evan isn't going to chime in very much at all unless prompted. Like a little bit of introduction will answer questions if asked, but but isn't particularly sort of like, hello, I'm here. I'm going to go do a lot of things of my own accord. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just 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 vibing, just enjoying the the brain vibes. As soon as I'm thoroughly crushed by Beaufort, I you know disconnect from the game psionically, and I see like my hands are shaking a little bit. I'm just like, man, I really could go for some brains right now. Maybe under my breath, not to everybody. Just like that's that's what it is. I'm I'm off my game. I haven't eaten any brains, and I look at the Bozog, and I'm like, he does have brains. <laughs> Maybe I get a little a little snack. What what's your name, guy? I have I haven't decided if I'm gonna eat you yet. Um, is my name going to be a factor in whether you decide to eat me or not? It very well might. <laughs> yeah. um, the more beloved you are, if you, uh, you know, build up a, what you might call a fan base, it makes you much um, less eatable. Um, well, or tragically eatable. Um, uh, my, name's, my name's Valtari. It's a, it's a traditional Bozog name. Oh, that's really nice. That's okay. You've, you've gained one uneatable point. I can take these away at my leisure, but... Are they like physic? Are they physical tokens I can hold on to as reassurance I won't be eaten? I was gonna say I hand you a button, but I realize a button is like the size of my body, so I don't think I can carry around buttons. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> this, I, re I remember the scene from the classic game Tactics: Bozog, let us cling together. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? um, oh, you could you could take the blood of uh, his dead friends and uh, make a tally mark on him. I've already wiped all the blood off on the Bozog has like a beautiful feathers, and I've just completely oh, ma dude. made them a sticky mess. Okay, I'll just I'll file that away in the not being eaten pile. 
Uh, B- Buford will offer uh, Wendy a cigar that's clearly too big for her as a replacement for her current addiction. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do with this, Gub Gub? <laughs> is this a is this a vehicle? Do I ride this into battle? <laughs> you could obliterate your tiny lungs. <laughs> I think I have kind of a gill situation going on. It. I my anatomy is crazy, dog. I replaced most of mine, so I don't really know what what you're do- dealing with right now. Hell yeah! High five. I think that's a bad <laughs> idea for you. <laughs> <laughs> the world's tidiest high five no survivors uh, <laughs> as as the uh, the shuttle is getting back towards the Resubian, um I think that Cammy is gonna come head over to Max and just go ah oh, so yeah she, I, I, how was how was the mission how was the mission uh it could have gone smoother I'm not particularly happy with how much uh, collateral damage there was, but we figured out what the problem was. And we got out safely, at least. Well, um, I, I'm, 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 I'm just glad that we don't have to deal with more, uh, no, more, more NFTs out in the universe. Those things are absolutely ruined a couple of planets a few years ago. They are uh, good riddance to them. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you're okay. Well, I'm glad to see you on the way back, you know. It's just yeah. You know, the other pilot's fine, but you know. I invented so many fa- I invented so many things you were gone. Sorry, I know I interrupted you. I'm sorry. I, I invented so many things while you were gone. I made so many things. Ooh. I, all right. I, I I made I made okay, this is this is maybe the best one. I made uh, a, a a thing that will uh it warms up the butter to just the right temperature for perfect spreading, but also not so runny that it's going to lose its consistency. But like, it, it's perfect for spreading. It's it, it's just like a little warming tray, but it only warms up just long enough to spread the butter, and then it rechills the butter. Oh, it rechills it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't know if that's like necessarily healthy and safe. I don't know if you're meant to let butter get a little bit soft and then re rechill it. I don't know if that's good for it, but it worked. Well, maybe we should, I don't know, have tea time or something with some scones and give it a whirl, you know? Yeah. I mean, we should probably do it before I've re-warmed and then re-chilled the butter too many times in case that's not a safe thing to do. But we'll get you in on one of the... We'll get you in while the butter's still good. Uh, and as this is being said, I think the... Uh, do, do you want your, your little your uh, shuttle that you sort of take to and from the Resubian to have a name? Your... Uh, smaller strike ship as it were i think it's important that it has a name i think the question is what kind of ship is it because in Spelljammer, jammer dnd's space setting all of the ships are shaped like and named after animals there's famously like the night spider the dolphin the the nautiloid is the big, most famous one so i'm definitely thinking mexican mole worm <laughs> Oh no! Sorry, Mexican mole lizard. Uh, that's a great one. I, I mean, uh, the naked mole rat could be a ship. <laughs> I mean, there's there's like what what are the the levels of like sort of squid esque or crustacean-y creatures you could have? You've got like you could have the the squid, the uh, the uh, prawn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm running out of them already. The Axolotl, I guess. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm I, I'm already running up, getting very far away from 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 squids. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, the canon ones that we mentioned on our side is there's an octopus, a squid, and a nautiloid in there. We could definitely have some other ones. Um, I'm definitely thinking if we're keeping it crustacean, uh, that the you know arthropods of some kind. I do like shrimp. The thing about shrimp that people forget is they have a, a hidden blade in their head they can deploy. Mm-hmm. As someone who used to hand live shrimp to tourists in Florida as a job, I have been stabbed by many a shrimp. Uh, I'm going to suggest a ancient uh, fossilized creature known as the Tully Monster. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, that's crazy. What is this? So it, it's to describe it. Imagine a cylinder, and then give it an arm uh, with a claw at the end of it, sticking right at the end of it, uh, and then just two eyes pointing off to the sides that don't seem to do anything. 
uh, we uh, like paleontologists have spent a lot of time trying to figure out what this thing is and why it looks like this, and the answer is, I don't fucking know. Its scientific name is the Telemonstrum, which gives it the t- colloquial name, the Tele Monster. This is if our ship's called the Tully that rocks. This thing is. The, I'm so glad I've seen this now. Yeah, i I think this. I think this has to be it. I think this is the Tully, the Tully Monster. It, it's vaguely squid-like. <laughs> it looks like I love. It's like a school bus, basically, but with a really long like neck attached to it. <laughs> yeah, it, the uh, the recreation on the Wikipedia page describes it as a lamprey-like creature, but it does have like a grabby arm as a face, which is uh, like the the docking claw that the ship can have, or like a salvage claw. I mean, this this yeah. This is functionally perfect, and it's the right vibe of in the middle of the weird abyss of nothingness you would stumble upon this thing. It even, in the photo, the pictures I'm looking at, it even looks like it has little porthole windows yeah. down the side of it. I was, I was, yeah, exactly. It's like a little bus with little porthole windows at the side for for tourism and transport, you know? It, it, I don't even think it was like a deep sea creature, if I remember right. It's just kind of in rivers. Yeah, I mean... It's- Sometimes when you try to name something, it takes forever, and you know you gotta throw ideas back and forth. But I think Dan fucking slam dunked this one from half yeah. court. Absolutely, first try. Uh, my favorite part, my favorite part about the Tully Mus- Munstrum is the fact that there's debates over whether it's a vertebrate or invertebrate creature. Effectively, and no one a- knows. They're like, this guy's <laughs> whack. <laughs> Shit's wild, scientist report. <laughs> and, frankly, if anything is evidence of intelligent design, it's this because it was an accident. This wasn't meant to. <laughs> this is a goofy ass design. This is what happened. Like, fossils are. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Uh, fossils are. Uh, uh, all fossils are fake, kind of, because they're actually, uh, they're actually data mined leftover designs that didn't make it into the final game. Uh, <laughs> As as this uh, as you're all having your various conversations uh, and pulling back into the Resubian, which uh, to describe it to our players on the the uh, the away team, uh, I think it was described in the home session as essentially being a ship that's shaped like an ice cream cone. Yeah, it has a very thick end and a very thin end. It is mechanical, yes. but yeah, we yeah. describe it as ice cream. It's big big mechanical space ice cream cone uh, that you sort of pull back into. Uh, the interior as you start onboarding is, it's not the sort of pristine uh, interior that you would expect with like a Star Trek type ship where everything is very polished and very clean and you don't see any of the working parts. There are pipes, there are, like this is a lived in kind of, kind of bodged together space in some regards. Uh, and as you get back onto the Resubian, you are met by a woman who is a very toned GIF. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know GIF, they are basically hippo people. Um, this woman is very toned, uh, seems like she probably would have gym, gym equipment in her personal quarters, uh, like, to keep that level of toned up. Uh, but she's dressed like she's just stumbled out of bed, despite having pristine, very, very styled hair and, vi- and like very colourful nails. Uh, this woman uh, is Ophelia, and she is responsible for handling debriefs when you get back from a mission. Uh, so Ophelia sort of welcomes you in and goes, "Okay, okay, 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 I'm." I've seen a lot of explosions on the monitors, and I've got the Bozog ambassador on the line claiming that you've deliberately sabotaged a research facility of some sort. Um, look, I've I've spoken to him a lot. I know that he's probably exaggerating, but I need to get you into the get you into the conference room so that we can hear your side of events, and I can sort the paperwork and get all of this sorted. So, come on, tell what happened. Why why is the why is the ship blown up? What did you do? Listen, Fifi, these guys started it, and you know, if the ambassador is going to give us a hard time, maybe there weren't any survivors, you know what I'm saying? Looking at looking at Viltari, maybe there were, maybe they weren't. Let's, let's see what their attitude is there like. Were, there, was, there were survivors, there <laughs> were. Hard we here. It's hard to say for sure. No one knows, really. It's a, The jury's out, and people are Miss, still trying to I'm alive, uncover- I'm here. Does it not eat me token? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, god. oh god, this is really not reassuring me. You've taken a pr- you've taken a prisoner. Have you taken a prisoner? Technically we saved someone. Yes, we 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 
we we were we there was only one escape pod and there was an empty seat so Veltari joined us wait wait there was only one escape pod that was a very large there's a very large atlas it's a, are you sure there was only one escape pod that's according to Veltari Look, quite frankly, we probably did a good thing for the the Bozog species raising their I- standard IQ point by a couple of notches. <laughs> ah, that's rude. That's very rude. And accurate. Okay. Also, I would like to lodge a formal HR complaint against the pilot who left us. If I if if I show up to an exfiltration and there's no shuttle, uh, we're gonna have a problem next time. Oh god, god. Um, look, okay. I look. I apologize for that one. Um, we someone got vented out the airlock, and uh, look, the, 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 <laughs> the magical seal is only gonna keep them breathing out there for so long, and all the other ships were already off doing missions, and as much as I wanted to have your ship like rare, ready to pick you up the second it was needed. I wasn't going to go and tell Barry's family that he suffocated in the airlock because you wanted your ship to, like, not have to do a round trip. Uh, Wendy connects psionically with the ship's captain, who is a big elder brain uh, who can reach everybody (laughs) psychically on the ship. And she says, Cap, Cap, tell Barry to suck my nuts. He can stay outside. I don't care. Don't leave me hanging. Uh, oh. Buford will join in on this and go, yeah, next time he can learn to hold his breath a little longer if the god dang ship is exploding. Look, look, Barry, look, Barry, Barry knows he fucked up. He, he's, he's had a bad day. He doesn't, he doesn't need me to tell him he fucked up. He knows he fucked up. It'll get worse if it happens again. <laughs> Oh, look, 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 you, look, go, go back to talking to Ophelia, you still have to explain why you blew up, a th- you, you don't get to, you don't get to do lectures until you explain why, uh, why I'm having to deal with, the f- Bozog ambassadors or <laughs> else. I, I, I believe you said it's spontaneously combusted due to, due to overclocking GPUs, essentially? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, that was, uh, that is the canon answer. <laughs> I move that we rename the strike team Fuck Barry. <laughs> Re- rename it from what? Does it have its first name? We should probably come up with that. What is the strike team's original name prior to this suggestion? So I, I do have a suggestion for this, and it's uh, Worm Squad Nine because we're always in deep shit. Uh, my 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 assumption was um was disposable empty text field was the uh, idea I had for the team name. <laughs> In the six months leading up to this uh, recording, I've been calling them home team and away team. Uh, it's just how I've always thought of them. And then in the two recordings we did, two days apart, I am now dealt with Velvet Foxes and Worm <laughs> Team 9. It's extremely <laughs> jarring. Um, do we have any thoughts about incorporating our beautiful boy, Tully, into the na- team's names? T- Tully's boys. Mm. <laughs> Tully's team. <laughs> I'm in love with Tully now. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. You could, we could just call it Tully's mom. Monsters. Um, yeah, Ooh. we get. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of like, so I'm also like Tully Vision something. There, it's, it's kind of rings well. But can we get matching tattoos of the Tully monster? <laughs> I look. I'm as much as I I love Worm Team Nine, and I was real sold on it. I think that Tully's monsters is adorable <laughs> for a very vicious, violent team. Tull, yeah. Worm Team 9 sprang out of Dan's head like Athena from the brow of Zeus, the same way Velvet Foxes did to Leon. There's no backstory. Like, there's no, that wasn't a conversation. <laughs> so that was, that's a gem, a perfect, beautiful gem. But now, uh, But now we're Fuck Barry. Go- that's the point. We, we just give it up the name <laughs> Tully's Monsters for Fuck Barry. <laughs> but I think Buford's like, I literally just finished spray painting this on my arm. What are we doing here? <laughs> okay, look. Uh, da- Dan, Dan came up with the Tully Monsters suggestion for the ship. Um, I feel like giving Dan also Worm Team Nine. I'm, 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 I'm gonna take Tully's monsters. <laughs> I think, I think that's where we're, where we're starting. Before who was it that just suggested we rename it from Tully's monsters? I mean, Wendy said that Austin was joking though. He, he just thought it was a funny thing to say. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? No, the, he got Tully's monsters tattooed on his other arm, and he's like, this one doesn't come off. This one I can't. <laughs> easily replace wait so you have the thing for your mom on the arm that could be replaced but Tully's monsters you actually got tattooed on your organic arm look this probably is getting cut off sometime in the next I don't know 10 levels 
I think I think that the captain, uh, before hanging up the uh, the mental intercom, just goes, "No, we're not renaming the team to fuck Barry again. Barry already knows what he did. He will not be playing. He will not be trying to catch like a quick, quiet nap uh, during his off time in the airlock in future." I love you, Cap Cap. Love you too. <laughs> You're all great. <laughs> Keep up the good work. She she finds the presence of an elder brain extremely comforting. That's like an inappropriate thing to say to your boss, but <laughs> it just came yeah. out. But I here's the thing. I th- I think that the captain like the captain gets it and <laughs> okay, probably extends the like extends the sentiment to the rest of the team to not be seen playing favorites. But like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> B- Buford's last bosses, last and only bosses, were his parents, and I think he's extremely uncomfortable by a giant brain saying he that it loves him. <laughs> uh, Max will raise a finger and just sort of pause it. With respect to why the station, uh, well, self detonated, as far as I can tell, even if we hadn't intervened, it would have happened in any case. So. It seems like an inevitable form of the uh, activities that were happening on this supposed research station. Okay, okay, fine. Look, if 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 what you've been telling me about about this is is all good, um, I really hope at least one of you thought to like I don't know, um, right click save some schematics for those non fungible targets so that we have some evidence that this happened. Uh, that, that would really help my paperwork trail. I right click saved this guy. Wendy says, p- poking him with the ice pick. Or Veltari, she, her, I assume. That's a f- female character we named it after. Um, uh, I-, I think Veltari is she, they. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, Veltari's gonna t- chime up and go, uh, I'll, 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 I'll write something. I'll, I'll write like a declaration to the, to the, the ambassador. Uh, if, if you get me something in writing that says this one won't eat me. Okay, we're the good guys. We would never eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, Ophelia chimes in just, Okay, okay, stop stop winding the thing up. Um, right. Uh, uh, go, go, go tell someone uh, down at the reception desk what your name is and that you are the latest person to just be grabbed during a mission. We'll, like, find you some quarters somewhere and... Tomorrow, someone will like fill out some paperwork and find out what you you can either you you're not stuck here. You can leave if you want, but if you want to hang out here, we'll like find a job for you or something. Um, you can sleep in the airlock tonight. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been telling Bill Webb we need a prison. Why is there no prison on this ship? Um, look, look. Uh, uh, look, the, the the airlock makes a fantastic prison, but we don't need it today. We, we, we've got business to get to. I, I, I'm i sorry to get talking work so quickly after you've just gotten back from your last mission, but I, it's not immediate, but I've got another job for you that's leaving in the morning, so um, I'm going to give you the basics, uh, and then you can all go get a good night's sleep, I guess, because, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a quick turnaround tonight. Um, Wendy raises her hand. Yes. Whose morning is it in? Because we're in space and there's no day and night. Universal standard time. We all agreed all across the galaxy to have one time standard. It is, it, it's just the one time we all set the clocks to. It's not set on anyone's... I, did you really pay this little attention in like basic, basic astrology? Yep. Do you, do you not know we have a standard? We have a time standard. And I don't respect it. <laughs> UST, Universal Space Time. All right, sounds canon. She cool. says, looking at a security camera like she's in the office. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, right, right. If, if everyone's, everyone's done with questions, I'm going to give you the basics of, of what's coming up. Um, short version. Uh, you're going to go need to oversee some peace talks. Um we we've got some talks going on between the illithids and uh non uh, some of the non illithid species uh officially you're going to be there as neutral observers um the reality is you, you're going to be there to make sure no one gets um no one gets killed these talks uh in my experience pretty violent sometimes um they should really call them something else 
Yeah, well, I mean, look, the, the hope is that there's peace, but as soon as you get, like, all the people who are willing to have peace in a room and go, this is the one room where all the people willing to make peace are in the room, it's a very big... T like, look, I, it's it's always going to end up being a target for people who don't want there to be peace. Uh, they should really call it rest in peace talks. <laughs> I mean, look if, look, if you want to call it internally, we can write it at the top of your, like, little mission notes for the morning, the, the re it, Operation Rest in Peace talks. Although that does sound like you're there to kill everyone, which is not... <laughs> he, he's already brought up Magic Arena and turned out, turned tuned out of this conversation. <laughs> They they just they finally banned Paradox Engine. Historic Brawl is playable now, so, so I'm, I'm gone. Bye. So, but 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 Max does raise their hand and will then just chime in. So in, in essence, we're just there to just prevent any sort of mass assassination plot or something. I mean, look, it's not necessarily assassination. I it it, it could be someone who's going there to to spread uh, insidious lies about about the other side so that everyone gets arguing and doesn't make peace. Maybe assassination, maybe just, you know, oh, they're whipping the, the out, people outside into a frenzy and the talks have to get called off. Uh, these, these talks are our best shot we've had yet at, at having some lasting peace, and there are people on all sides invested in the status quo. Um, you know, it's... B Buford, <laughs> Buford also raises his hand, yes. uh, clipping, the, clipping the ceiling, probably yes. breaking the pipe in the process. <laughs> okay, uh, fine, we'll get to these... a tizzy, we need someone to repair the pipes. Uh, yes? Th these, uh, these peace docks, do I gotta wear a suit? Um, you do not have to wear a suit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, if you would like to wear a suit, it might no. help. We can, like, we can, we can try and make one with, like, an open side. As Buford looks at himself, where he's basically wearing the space equivalent of cyborg overalls, with his with his non robot size still we can, exposed. We can find you. We can find you like an apron with like a suit pattern painted onto it. Absolutely not. Look, our, our concern is basically just if if look I. My big concern is that if someone on the Illithid side gets killed, they're going to blame the other side, and if someone on the other side gets killed, they're going to blame the Illithids, and it's going to everything's just going to flare up again. Just keep everyone breathing, and keep everyone in that room, not being misinformed, having peace talks until the talking is done and peace can happen. I'll, we'll give you give you all the proper information tomorrow, but. Um, I, I, I've got a couple of bits that I think are probably important to let you know. Uh, Wendy. That's me. Uh, yes, uh, we're particularly in, 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 uh, interested in your input. Uh, your, your skill set is going to be particularly useful, uh, given that there's going to be a lot of people skulking around having ulterior motives, and I, I feel like you're going to be in a good position to, 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 to do what needs to be done sneaky-wise. Uh, also just... Yeah, you're going to have more of an idea of what's at stake here than, than these two, and I would appreciate you making sure they don't make a fool of the situation. They call me the Skulk Master General. It sounds different in Illithid. It's funnier, sorry. It doesn't really make sense in common. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, Gubbins. Eh. Um, your sister. Your sister, Bridget. Yes. Um, what, what? Huh? Huh? Yep. Um, you, you might be interested to know that Bridget has uh, requested to join the landing party uh, under supervision. So, um. I so think I gotta wear a suit I'd, then. If, I'd, look, if, if you want to reconsider, we can, we can, we can find you. We can find a way to make something vaguely resemble. I'll wear the goddamn suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, look, we'll we'll make one that's entirely open. It just doesn't have one of the sides. It's sleeveless and sideless on one side. Suit on the rest, if that works. It's the goddamn shipping convention all over again. Isn't Ca Cammy the pilot is an inventor? That's the other, the Fennec Fox lady? Yep. Cam Cam, bulletproof suits, please. Look, I can try, I can try my best. Um... It is very short notice, and I do have to debug uh, the the butter tray. I'm already getting message alerts that it is uh, melting the butter to an extremely uh, concerning degree. It's starting to melt through parts of the ship, so I should probably get on that. But I'll try and get on bulletproof suits if I've got the time. B Buford's fixing the pipe he broke. 
Uh, so, uh, I, I think I think that's everything uh, I I needed from you. Uh, uh, a briefing, debrief dismissed. Uh, go get go get some rest and uh, uh, wait, get up bright and early in the morning. Uh, it's going to be a long, long day for you. And uh, with that, Ophelia sort of ushers you all uh, off off to uh, any little activities you want to do before before you head to bed and and your next mission begins. Evan makes sure to salute um, as they're led along with the others. Just the the flub, just fl- the spectral flub, just saluting all, all the while. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, no. Um, Ev- Evan is is like, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. All the way along the corridors. <laughs> I think Buford forgot the the flump was there. He's like, ah. <laughs> uh, Wendy would like to go find Barry. Who, <laughs> who compromised our mission? I'm gonna go bully that guy. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really feeling like a sort of synchronization between Wendy and Buford right now because that was also on my list of things to do. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect.